MacWest MD. I'm an associate clinical professor in medical oncology at City of Hope Cancer Center in the Los Angeles area, uh, and also founder and president of Grace. Uh, Isabel, can you tell us who you are and what you are? Sure. Um, my name is Isabel Preschigal. I am a thoracic oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and I am very excited to be here today speaking to all of you. And Joan. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Joan Schiller. I'm a medical oncologist um, living now in Northern Virginia. I was formerly the deputy director of the Cancer Center at UT Southwestern and also of the Shar Cancer Center in um, in Northern Virginia as part of ANOVA. Excellent. I'm glad to be with you. Let's turn to the question of chemo and immunotherapy for patients with uh, with a driver mutation, specifically at least the, the more common, better studied ones like EGFR mutations and ALK rearrangements. And, and many of us have had you know, hundreds of these patients over the years and at Memorial, that's a huge population that you're studying, but, but we still have not, we don't have a good idea of how or even whether to use immune therapy for these patients. There's been a general uh, perception and uh, scant data to show at least as single drugs, immune therapies don't work very well for patients with at least many of the driver mutations we know about, EGFR and ALK at least. And, and, and I would say anecdotally in our experience, not that good with, with many others. Um, we have a little more data now than we did a few weeks ago on chemo with immune therapy in some of these patients. This was uh, a presentation by Shears Gadgill from the World Conference on Lung Cancer um, and looked at the carbo, alimta, pemetrexid, and pembrolizumab, Keytruda. So a commonly used regimen, uh, one that it comes from our, uh, our use of the Keynote 189 trial. So Keynote 189 was a study of this three drug regimen versus uh, chemo alone without the Keytruda in patients with non-squamous advanced lung cancer, but those patients couldn't have an EGFR mutation or ALK rearrangement. Um, and so we really struggle with what to do when patients who have already been on and now have progression on Tegriso or some other EGFR inhibitors or ALK inhibitors, and we feel like they need to move on to something other than targeted therapies. Should we include immune therapy or not? This study had six centers enrolled 42 patients over several years. Most had an EGFR mutation, some had ALK. And I would say, you know, the results that are most notable to me are that patients with an EGFR mutation look like they did pretty well with the chemo immune therapy. 42% response rate, median progression-free survival, so half going out to 8.3 months, half going beyond, or going out uh, progressing before, half progressing after eight months, and the median overall survival approaching a couple of years. That's good, uh, relatively speaking, for patients who have been on and progressed on EGFR inhibitors. Results are poor for the patients with an ALK rearrangement, not large numbers, but really just a couple of months before these patients progressed on it. We can't know from this work how much of this is from the chemo, the immune therapy, or what. And so I would just ask you, you know, what does this mean to you, Joan? Uh, do, are, are you, uh, are you uh, changing how you approach and recommend treatment for, for these patients? Is there anything that we can really draw from a relatively small single arm trial? Um, well, I was most surprised by the difference between how the patients with the ELK rearrangement did compared to the patients with the EGFR mutation. It's very striking, and I would not have expected that. So I think, if nothing else, we're learning something about the biology of these um, mutations and rearrangements, that they are not all the same. Right, that we shouldn't paint them all with one brush. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The... Um, the patients with the EG, now numbers are small. So that's one of the biggest problems here is that the numbers are small. But the patients with the EGFR mutations, as you said, Jack, did surprisingly well. 
um, to the point where I would think about using that three drug combination for those patients, but not for the elk patients. Isabel, what do you take from this work? Um, I agree with you, Joan. I think the thing that was most striking to me was the discrepancy between the elk fusion and the EGFR um, altered patients. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I would want to know, um, while it is a small study, I always put a pause with exposing patients that have had TKIs, particularly osimertinib, um, and then giving them immunotherapy for the risk of um, pneumonitis or potentiating that. And that would be something that I would be curious to see what the rate of pneumonitis was, because typically for patients who harbor EGFR, uh, EGFR mutations and they got frontline OC, we would think about um, looking for resistance alterations that drove their progression and then putting them on protocol if eligible, or even considering um, carbopemi bevacizumab and, and holding off on the immunotherapy for these patients. So it's nice to see that they did well, but I'm just curious what the, what the tox was. Yeah, I, I, I don't have that in front of us, but I don't think it was a particularly obvious issue. I, I do think you raise a great point that uh, the real danger, at least that we know of, is by giving them concurrently or giving uh, the immune therapy, which has a long half-life, it stays in your system for weeks and weeks after it's given, and then following with Tigriso, with osimertinib, maybe also with other uh, oral EGFR inhibitors, um, not as clearly uh, a risk to do it the other way around if, if because the the Tigriso kind of clears your system in a short time. But once you give the immune therapy, if you decide you need to go back and give the Tigriso again, it's, it's a danger for sure. So uh, importantly, we will be getting at some point in the next year or two, some data on larger trials that definitively address this, at least for EGFR. We're still gonna be left struggling with what to do for patients with other driver mutations like RET and, and et cetera. But, uh, but at least we're starting to see some data here.